Well, welcome to Module 5. We're going to be looking at the tools of discovery and the older brain structures. And one of the things that, uh, uh, well, th this cartoon actually highlights something about the mind and the brain. Uh, in your book, the, the author makes the comment that uh, mind uh, is, is the work. The brain does and that's that's this essentially is that the structures the body embodies the mind and that's part of what makes us us and makes us interesting so in a lot of ways the the mind has a lot to do with the uh, things that we would refer to as personality who I am how I am uh, what's predictable about me? What can people get to know about me, quote unquote? Uh, so it, it, it really is quite key that that the things that we look at structurally are the things that that in are the workspaces in a sense in which the mind operates. Now, what we're going to turn our attention to here is something that your book refers to as older brain structures, and one of the things that I want to make sure that we uh, that I comment on, which it really is the undergirding, um, uh, the undergirding principle, even in a class like ours, is for you to guys, for you guys to develop a, an ability to think critically about the information that you're provided, and, and not uncritically. And one of the ways to do that is to understand something as simple as a word like older because it betrays a, a underlying assumption that you'll see throughout psychology, throughout a lot of the other sciences, obvi obviously, that is uh, by its nature and assumptions evolutionary. Now, I don't make that, I'm, I'm not saying that to make it out to be a bad word at all, but the reality is, is that from an evolutionary standpoint, uh, we progress from older to younger. And that's true to uh, even in the development of our um, brain structures. Their perspective, uh, from an evolutionary standpoint, is that the, the interior, the brain stem and the structures that we're going to look at here, were developed first. And as a process of selection and as a process of, of uh, the um, survival of the fittest, brain structures slowly began to develop in more and more complexity and those uh, uh, individuals that had a greater brain, a more developed brain, survived and they passed that same thing on to their offspring. So older is key uh, and, it, and it betrays a particular assumption base uh, that the author and people that they're, he's quoting um, come from. So older brain structures, we're going to look at those and look at specifically how they support various functions within our body. All right, well, I'm, I'm going to briefly mention, it's, it's explained more fully in your book, but I'm going to briefly mention a few of the uh, tools that we oftentimes use um, in examining the brain. And the first one is the EEG, and you probably electroencephalogram. And it, it, it is measuring brain waves just under the skull. And when we talk about sleep, we will be able to look at um, uh, we will be able to look at what uh, it is going on during sleep in these brain waves. So EEG is one. Um, another one is a PET scan. Again, you, we will, uh, I will be using these as, as uh, uh, illustration points, if you will. Uh, it's a positron emission tomography, uh, and it basically uh, is showing the cell activity uh, by um, burning up glucose, which is really just a cell food, if you will. Um, and then, um, uh, and glucose is the primary uh, supply of, of um, cell food and cell activity. Um, 
MRI is another one, magnetic resonance imaging. We can actually look in places that we've never looked in before uh, because of a magnetic field. And then the, the second one is the fMRI, which is what the one I was going to uh, write just a minute ago. And we actually give people things to do, tests to do, uh, to um, watch how things function. Um, and so we can peek in, if you will, into uh, uh, to see the brain in, a, in its activity. So the PET scan is where things light up. The MRI are actually structures or soft tissue within the brain. Um, when it's um, at a resting state with an MRI, fMRI is one where it's a functional MRI and we're able to look at what's actually going on within it. Now, let's turn our attention real quickly to some of the, uh, what is referred to in your book as the older brain structures. Um, and there are key components to this that are important to keep in mind. Uh, the first one, which is up here, is the thalamus. And it is the, the, the central, as you can tell with this branching up here, it's kind of the central uh, circuitry system. It transfers um, activity from the upper brain, which is up in this area up here, which you see here, down, in, in, down through it and up into it, in, into the upper higher areas of the brain, down to the lower and vice versa. So. The thalamus is one, there's a small, very tiny structure underneath it, which we refer to as the hypothalamus. Um, and then the reticular formation, that's this one here, um, the reticular formation has a lot to do with alertness and the circadian rhythm of our sleep and uh, waking or sleeping, I should say. So reticular formation are these two structures uh, within it. And then the uh, final two, which are all part of the, even the oldest part, if you will, of our brainstem, is uh, this area down here. The first one being the, the pons, um, the pons itself, which uh, manages uh, the, our, our movements. And then the other element, which is even farther in, is the uh, medulla. Now, each of these, these two, are each referred to as the brainstem. And so uh, sometimes you might hear uh, of babies being born, for example, without a brainstem. And, and the miracle is, is that they actually survive um, after birth for a number of hours, way beyond what we would expect. But as you can tell, even in this diagram here, it is on the, the interior of the brain and then the other areas of the brain wrap around this brain stem. So it's kind of the central core of, of the brain itself um, in terms of our functioning itself.